Hi all. So in this video, we're going to see about EEG or electroencephalogram. So this has been asked in many university questions like this. Uh, waves in EEG, normal EEG waves, type of types of EEG wave forms, functions of EEG, etc. etc. So basically, you have to know the waves and the functions of an electroencephalogram. So we'll see more about it. So what is meant by EEG? EEG or electroencephalogram is a recording that represents the electrical activity of the brain. And how is it recorded? It is measured using scalp electrodes. It is measured using scalp electrodes. Okay. So now we'll move on to what is the neural basis of EEG or what, what causes EEG. So see, suppose this is a neuron and this is a dendritic tree. We know that based on the neurotransmitter release, there can be an EPSP or IPSP that is developed at these dendritic sites, right? Based on the neurotransmitter that is released, that they can develop an EPSP or IPSP at each of these active synaptic knobs, okay? So basically, EEG is going to measure those EPSPs, the summated EPSPs and IPSPs that is being recorded by the electroencephalogram. So what's the difference between this EPSP and IPSP and the action potential? See, action potential is an all or none phenomenon and that is produced way down here, right? So the action potential is a different thing. What EEG measures is not action potential, but the summated postsynaptic potentials. That is EPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potentials and inhibitory postsynaptic potential. A summation of EPSPs and IPSPs are recorded by the EEG. How? with the help of the electrodes that are placed on the scalp. So this is the neural basis of EEG. So for the exam, you can write it like this. An electroencephalogram recorded from the scalp is a measure of summation of dendritic postsynaptic potentials rather than action potentials. Current flow to and from the active synaptic knobs on the dendrites produces wave activity while all or non action potentials are transmitted along the axon. So see these two points that it is the dendritic uh, postsynaptic potentials and that it is produced at these uh, dendrites. That is these two points you can write when you are asked the neural basis of EEG. So now we will see about the different waves of EEG. So we have got many different types of waves. So we will see each one by one. The first one is called alpha waves or these are the waves that are produced in quiet wakefulness. What is meant by quiet wakefulness? See, when an adult human is awake, but the mind is at rest, eyes closed and mind is wandering. So basically, you have closed your eyes, but you have not slept. At that time, you have these alpha waves. And the frequency of these waves is around 8 to 12 hertz. Okay. And uh, for each wave, there is a specific area where you will get that the most. So these alpha waves are recorded mainly from the parieto-occipital area. So see, this is a diagram showing, our, uh, it's, a, it's a representative diagram showing the alpha waves. You can see that the frequency here is around 8 to 12 and the amplitude is around 50 microvolt. Okay, so that is why we've got waves like this. These are the alpha waves. The next waves are called the beta waves. Okay, so what is the major, major difference that you find here? You can see that the amplitude has reduced a lot and the frequency has increased. So what are these waves called? They are the beta waves and they are waves of alert wakefulness. It is called alert wakefulness. What is meant by alert wakefulness? When a person is awake and mentally alert with eyes open. So the person is not thinking too much. He is just awake. He is mentally alert with eyes open. Then we have got these beta waves. And the frequency of these waves are around 18 to uh, 13 to 30 hertz and of low amplitude. Okay, So frequency is more 13 to 30 hertz and is of low amplitude. And these waves are generally recorded over the frontal region of the brain. Alpha waves was at the parieto-occipital region of the brain. The beta waves is at the frontal region of the brain. And paradoxically, these waves are also seen in REM type of sleep. See, here we said that it is waves of alert wakefulness. But they can also be seen during the REM type of sleep. That is why there is a paradox there. Okay, so that is about beta waves. So another concept that you have to know here is alpha block. What is meant by alpha block? The replacement of alpha waves with beta waves when a person opens his eyes or concentrates is called alpha block. What does it mean? See, suppose a person was in a relaxed state with his eyes closed. So we will get 
alpha waves right but then suddenly if he opens his eyes what will happen see those alpha waves will be replaced by beta waves and then again when he closes his eyes the alpha waves will return so this is called alpha block that means replacement of alpha waves with beta waves when a person opens his eyes or concentrates is called alpha block okay so this is a very uh, important point next we move on to the next wave of eeg which is the theta waves or large amplitude slower frequency waves so these wave these waves are generally recorded in children and their frequency is much lesser 4 to 7 hertz and is of large amplitude and uh, they are known to be generated in the hippocampus okay and these are the waves in eeg when the person falls asleep that is especially in stage 2 and 3 of sleep so these are recorded when the person falls asleep okay when he is going to sleep you can get these theta waves so it's something like this you can see that the amplitude has increased and the frequency has decreased okay so that is the theta waves right and finally we've got the delta waves which are large amplitude slower frequency so here the frequency is less than 4 hertz and they are recorded in very deep sleep and in organic disease so see you got theta waves when the person was falling to sleep but in deep sleep we'll get delta waves and in organic brain disease so the theta waves do not require the activity of the thalamus what does that mean see all other waves contains electrical activity which are generated from the thalamus also but delta waves are produced even if the thalamus is being cut off which means it does not require the activity of the thalamus so here you can see the, the waves are like this you can see that the frequency is very less the amplitude is again around 100 microvolt so that will complete our major waves now we've got something called gamma oscillations gamma oscillations are very frequency high frequency waves which are usually seen in individuals who is aroused and focuses attention on something so see now when you're doing something important when you're concentrating and doing something important the brain waves are going to be gamma oscillations which are high frequency waves okay so in a nutshell we can uh, start with the wave that has got the least frequency so delta wave which is seen in deep sleep is got a frequency less than 4 amplitude of more than 100 theta waves in light sleep frequency is 4 to 7 amplitude is more than 100 then alpha waves 8 to 13 the amplitude is 5 to 100 when the person is awake with eyes closed beta 13 to 30 uh, the amplitude is 5 to 20 awake with eyes open and in rem sleep gamma oscillation when the person is concentrating and the frequency is very high so you can see that this chart is basically Uh, in an order of increased concentration so first the person was in deep sleep then light sleep then awake with eyes closed awake with eyes open and cognitive activity so if you if you study this order it will be easier for you to memorize the amplitude and the frequency of each wave okay so now we'll move on to the next session which are uses of eeg so this itself has been asked as a short essay or it can be asked as a part of a question so we'll see more about it what are the uses of eeg so the most important use is in epilepsy so we know that in epilepsy or when you have seizures we want to identify from where are these seizures originating so with the help of eeg you can identify the epileptogenic force i which part of the brain is causing this epilepsy and also you can help differentiate between various types of epilepsy what are the various types of epilepsy see we've got grand mal epilepsy which is basically in which the person will have convulsions throughout the body so in grand mal epilepsy it is characterized by high frequency high amplitude waves then we've got petit mal epilepsy which is identified by spike and dome patterns spike and dome patterns and we've got psychomotor seizures which shows low amplitude abnormal wave patterns so based on the different patterns that are produced on the eeg you can identify or differentiate which type of epilepsy it is okay so that is a major role of eeg in epilepsy then you can also use eeg for detection or localization of subdural hematoma so see suppose you've got a subdural hematoma suppose you've got a clot here so what will happen the eeg that is produced over overlying the clot will be damped so that is why that is how you can identify whether there is a subdural hematoma then you can also identify brain tumors so in brain tumors in that area 
the neurons are compressed right so such neurons will produce a high amplitude high frequency waves high amplitude and high frequency waves from areas of brain tumor you can also identify organic brain dysfunction like a brain injury so if there is a brain injury the eeg will show abnormal waveforms and finally for determination of brain death when there is a brain death you will have a flat eeg waveform for an extended period so these are the other uses of eeg other than epilepsy so you don't have to draw this diagram i just uh, drew it you know so that you can uh, remember what are the different causes uses of eeg so subdural hematoma brain tumor brain injury brain death okay and finally you can also use it for diagnosis of sleep disturbance you can analyze the sleep pattern and diagnose the sleep disorders using eeg recordings and you can also use it for assessment of conscious dysfunction so suppose a patient is in coma to know whether the patient is in coma syncope or stupor based on observing the eeg waveforms you can identify in which state of consciousness the person is okay so that will conclude the uses of eeg so what all to summarize we have discussed the definition the neural basis in which we talked about that the eeg is a measure of the summated postsynaptic dendritic potentials okay and not the action potentials we have talked about the different waves the alpha beta theta and delta waves and we also said there is something called gamma oscillations when the person concentrates so it's good if you can draw this diagram in your answer sheet you just have to uh, you know know the rough amplitude and frequency of each wave okay and finally you've talked about the uses in which we talked about epilepsy we talked about subdural hematoma brain tumor brain injury brain death and then about sleep disturbances and conscious dysfunctions so that would conclude this short video on eeg i hope the concept is clear thank you